I'm going to talk to you about a call for help. This is going to be people that they really want to be in the ministry. I've been in the ministry for a long, long time. If I said that everything was beautiful, that I never have a problem, that's a lie. Because in this life, especially being in the ministry, is not easy. And what I'm going to tell you is something that I have really thought about it. It has to do with a man that is, is a hero. And there's a lot of heroes in the Bible. I've got a lot of heroes in my life. Billy Graham. Gloria and I, we have been in his home and have the moment to have. I thought that, that as evangelist, I'm being in the home of Billy, that I'm gonna, he gonna have a feast for me. And there's Ruth, his wife, and I was waiting and we sit down at the table and was waiting for a tremendous <laughs> dinner. Fried chicken. You, you talk to evangelist and he can tell you that the only thing he do is fried chicken. If you go to, to London or to England, what is that they eat over there? Fish and chip. Right? Because he was pastoring in London. Dave Wilkerson. My spiritual father. And I know that many times of, uh, the way that he went with Jesus, I'm glad that their children never saw that way. The accident and all of that. He was tough. Dave was tough. Dave, you got to know that he was very, very strong in his character, his ministry, his approach with people. But I got a way to deal with him. <laughs> you know, he was, a, he was a prophet. You know that? I'm serious. He, the book that he wrote about vision if you never read that book, read it. He was ahead of time. And he made a lot of enemies. Pentecostal enemies. Assembly of God. And this man stood there, took all the shot, and he became bigger and bigger and bigger because God took him and took him into the place where he belonged. And many of you still remember his newsletters and all of that. That it was my spiritual, my spiritual father. I'm not like him. He was very strong, got a habit. <laughs> I said, Dave, what, what are you doing? <laughs> remember? And when he, when he don't like somebody go, <laughs> I thought that, that he was, that was a strain. <laughs> and the person that I'm going to talk about it, I really meditate a lot. You're going to excuse me for my accent. I do have an accent. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> what you say, Cindy? <laughs> Cindy, what you say? A oh, little bit, okay. But I like it. 
It's a sexy accent that I don't know how I... Listen, that's a lie. <laughs> I'm going to make it to heaven regardless if I had to lie. <laughs> no. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 through 16. So the king of Israel went with the kings of Judah and the king of Edom. And they traveled around this for seven days, and there was not enough water for the army to, for, to them and for the animals. Finally, the king of Israel said, Oh, I think, I think that the Lord really brought us three kings together only to let the Moabites to defeat us. But Josephat said, Surely, one of the one of the Lord prophet is is here. Let's ask the prophet that the Lord say we should do. One of this one of the servants of the king of Israel said, Elisha is here, which is meaning around the neighborhood. So the king went down to see Elisha. Elisha said to the king of Israel, what do you want from me? Go to, go to the prophet of your father and mother. The king of Israel said to Elisha, no, we have come to see, to see you because the Lord called, called us three kings together to let the Moabites defeat us. What excuse? Elijah said, I respect King Joseph of Judah, and I serve the Lord all powerful. Assuredly, as he lived, I came here only because of Joseph. I tell you the truth. If he were not here, I will not pay any attention to you. I will ignore you completely. But now, bring me someone who played the harp. The harp. I, I was here in the, the first service when Pastor Gary was talking and he went with something that I wasn't expecting, but it was beautiful to introduce us to a worship way to let you serve, you know, loose, to praise the Lord, to be thankful, be loose, let your hair down. That's what he's trying to say, that many were people that were born here. And And they were like this, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, forgive me. If you don't forgive me, you're not going to make it to heaven. <laughs> Please. To place the harp. When the person started playing, the Lord power came on Elijah. Then Elijah said, this is what the Lord said, dig a hole in the valley. Dig a hole in the valley. Elijah was a type of prophet that he learned everything from the master. He was disciple of one of the greatest evangelists, Elijah. During the ministry 
And the Bible tells tell us that Elijah was taken, taken up to heaven. And in, in that area, leaving Elisha behind. And there's one thing. Elisha didn't want to really leave him. Every place that he go, oh, no, I'm going to go with you. Oh, no, I'm going to. There's something in the life that he learned. He had to be the one who take the mantle and be the successor. At that time in the ministry, Elisha was very wise because he wasn't satisfied enough. He asked for a double portion of the Holy Spirit, which has been the anointing. And there's something about this man. He was unshakable in his, com- in his convictions and in, in his calling. The Bible tells us that he was so committed right after he received his call and he burned his accents and basically all he had so there will, there will be nothing to turn back. It's gone. I'm going to follow the calling. I'm going to go ahead and get ready of everything. I'm just going to aim to the things that is going to be the things that are going to use me and take me and anoint me and do all these things. So here we have a problem. Elijah was a true man of God. People knew that he was so full of the power of God, they knew that he was the man to go for an answer, for, for a word that only the Lord can give him, to intercede in, in behalf of, of their needs, to pray in the moments of deliverance. This, this man was awesome. This, this guy has something that everybody wish. Many people say, I want to be like Elijah. Wait, you don't want to be like Elijah? He did more power. He did more miracles. And yet he was bold. <laughs> king jo- Joran is the king of Israel and the son of the wicked king Ahab. And his evil wife. What was her name? Is any mother in this play one? If you have a daughter, do you call your daughter yes, have Tell me. Anybody here that has a boy, do you call your boy Judah? Huh? Here is this man's background. A son of King Ahab and his evil mother, Jezebel. But you know what? That was his parents. The good news is that he was not as bad as his parents, but he doesn't know the Lord, and he still worship idols. And there's always gonna be something that happened to the people of Israel that they have a tremendous attraction for witchcraft. Seriously. Because a supernatural type of thing, because that was the custom, that the way they left with all this hang up. 
And many of them, they just follow whatever the custom, and always there's an idol in their life, and here he has to be in a situation that, that the way that Elisha felt about him. And here, King Joram was a problem with the neighbor the neighboring country of Moab reverence against him, so he asked the king, Josaphat, and the king of Eden to join him in a fighting for the people. But when, but when Elijah, Elijah see Joran, he is angry. Look at his attitude, the change in here. He is angry at the sight of the unholy Joran, who is still blaming God if the Lord doing bringing us out of here or we're going to die. Elijah burned with a holy anger and the godless king of Joran and this is what he said. Why are you go? Or what are you, God, be asked you or asked by you? What, what, what is this thing? Why should God be asked by you? He was an honest reaction. It's like a stranger showing up in your house at Christmas wanting to have a gift. Of a guy that got busted in prison calling you being a stranger for you to get him out of prison. This was what is going on. But lucky for the king of Israel. There was somebody here that he very be thankful. Elijah knew. And Elijah knows. Joseph had. Respect him. Respect the Lord. And value his life. And out of all this respect for Joseph, Elisha agreed to help them. He knew he wanted to really hear from God. And you know what? 29 times is the only man Elisha has been mentioned in the Bible. 29 times. He broke the record. He broke the Super Bowl. As a man of God, I started slow, but I get him. Come on, Nicky. Mm -hmm. Hit it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, there is a man that he was very straight. He helped Israel. He helped Judah because there was some king by the name of Joseph that he was fearful of God. He knows that if he wants to hear from God, he needs to come because this is, this is what happened to Elijah. He got so angry. How in the world when you are angry you're going to do something because you don't have no time to listen? To listen. You, uh, you, 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 you total in your mind. Is, you, you don't have no time to, to listen to, to God's voice. Why? Because he was so angry. A holy angry. 
And here, still in this situation, Elijah burned with a holy anger and at the godless King Joram. And he went after him. He went after him like a gangbuster. He went after him like a New Yorker. What's the matter with you? Huh? Forget about it. Get out of here. That was a New York attitude. No, no. Elijah came to the sentence and said, no, no, I don't want to be confused with all the noises right here on my head. He need to have clarity in his mind so he can shut out every comparing voices and hear the voice of God answer him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or either still I don't get in there. Thank you, baby. I'm sorry, Gloria. It is, it is, you cannot listen. I don't care how big you are, that you're gonna be around a lot of situations in your life that you're gonna go confused and you don't know what to do because you hang up and you're involved in the things that you think you, unholy king. Get out of my face. No, 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 no. No, I got a bite for you. That's not the way it is. He has to do something, and that something has to deal with a need and the man, the king, Joseph, that asked him because he respected, but still, through all of this turmoil that was going, he really, really don't want nothing to do with the king of Israel. Let me tell you something. There are two things that we learn from Elisha about ministry and about life. Be the person that people look for when they need answer. Have a reputation as someone who knows God, who knows God's voice, and seek his wisdom. That is all Elijah. Elijah was willing to stand alone. And let me tell you something. That's the hardest thing in this life. Did you ever have, do you ever have been betrayed? By somebody who you love? Hmm? You got to stay and willing to stand for whatever your conviction, whatever you calling in your life, because right now, the United States of America is in trouble. Right now, we are confused. Right now, the educational system is on all the way down. Right now, we have problems of identity. We don't know who we are. I'm a man, man. <laughs> I'm a man, I'm sorry. I'm a man. I'm a man. I don't need no operation. <laughs> we disrespect 
respect the law. Some of these politicians are a bunch of liars. Liars. They promise you something, forget about it. Forget about it. We're struggling right now with principality. We're dealing with evil people. Evil politicians. We've been attacked. Our marriage. Our children. We have been bombarded with everything that you can imagine. And here, we're watching our nation going down and down and down and down. Let me say something. God is looking. He's searching. He's searching for the pastor. A man of God. Yeah, yes, he's searching. And you are the person here in this place. And let me tell you something. Don't you ever undermine, underestimate yourself. The Holy Spirit is for real. And right now, God is searching all over the United States. Find me a pastor. Find me. Because we need it. People are hurting. People literally are hurting. People are lonely. We never have seen this nation losing the teenagers, the children, finding them in the sidewalk, dead because a $5 pill. Coming from where? All the way from China. All the way to the cartel. All the way to the United States. And we have over 100,000 kids dying. And what are we going to do? Find me a pastor that stands for righteousness. To stand for what is right. We need men in Russia. No, he's not bound down to anything. You know, when you listen what happened in Nicaragua, then this, you told me this. I, I, I forgot your name. Your name is. <laughs> I, I get it. You told me that about the. the Arresting the pastors. They're throwing them in jail. America is losing it. That's why, that's the reason Elisha has to really say, hold it, I'm losing it. I better get it together. There's a lot of things going to my mind here. I'm telling this, Kim, if, if I have a word to go to hell. It's ungodly. It's no good for nothing. Well, this is the nation. We have a nation full of godly people. And let me tell you one thing about the demon dimension. The demon dimension comes in different forms. Because I was born. I was given birth. It's a possession sometimes that comes slowly, but then possess you and take you. And then in the end, you loosen it. You began to worship the devil. That's the reason this is dangerous. We need to do something about it. And that's what I was struggling, and that's what you saw in the beginning. Uh, how I'm going to get in? How I'm going to penetrate this situation? I'm going to tell you something. I am going to stand firm. I'm going to fight for my family. I'm going to fight 
for my daughters. I'm going to fight for my grandchildren. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to ask the blood of Jesus to come all over and saturate every home of my daughters. And there's no exception to the rules. There's a lot of pain in this room. You know why? Because you are suffering because somebody in your family are going in a different direction. We have to call space. space. We got to tell the devil, get out of our life and let the peace of God be overwhelming our homes. Here yeah, I'm screaming, screaming, and screaming for nothing. No. I told my wife, it didn't get worse for something that we believe. I don't mind to go to jail. I don't mind to go to jail, I honest to you. Because if I go to jail, I still be evangelist. I will give problems to the devil. That will be the biggest mistake that the government will do. Are you willing to lay your life down like Jesus did? Are you willing to stand up for righteousness? Are you willing to just confess your hang up and turn to God, burn everything? To hell with the devil. He had done a lot of damage. And we are let him doing it. No. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe that God can come to us, anointing us, helping us. I believe that our preachers will come ball of fire. I don't care about my accent. It's an accident. <laughs> we need to reflect. I'm tired. I'm tired. We need to go back to the old time religion. We need to let God go. The time of signs and wonder. What happened? Many ministers went different directions. Many evangelists, televangelists go in different directions. We preach prosperity and nothing happened. The whole world it is. How are you going to rebuke a demon with prosperity? Are you going to give him money? Pastor, I, I'm all right, Tim. Do I got your blessing, <laughs> Gary? Cindy, you sit down and relax. Take a walk on the west side. <laughs> Gary, I'm gonna need you in just of ten minutes. All of you guys. Because I run out of space. I, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be in this earth. But I'll tell you one thing. With all, all the things uh, that I went through, I, no, I can't no close. There's something about Jesus. I love him. I want to tell you that you're not alone. You're never going to walk alone. As long as you put Jesus first in your life, in your marriage, in your family. 
I'm looking tonight for one person here. Of so many people here. Remember what Martin Luther said? With God, one is the majority. We are not the minority. In God, we are the majority. You standing as an individual. Let me say, you are connected with heaven. You are connected with the anointing. You are completely. Let yourself go. Just let yourself be used. Burn your pride. Caramba. Ya, ya se acabó. Ríndete al Señor. Stop playing games. Stop playing the game of holy macaroni. Go into the field. Do what God wants you to do. Let the Holy Ghost take over you and you're going to see the hands of God like you have never have seen it in your life. Don't underestimate your wife. Don't underestimate your children because the Holy Spirit will come when less you expect it. Let me say one thing. There are going to be a moment that some of your children will feel the presence of God in their life and they will run into your master bedroom and they will draw themselves and you say, but what's the matter, son? What's the matter, daughter? Oh, man, I'm dad. I feel something in me. I feel something that, that God is speaking to me. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I know some people here have hurting in life, hurting with the children. It's in endless. But you, Karabashan de Kerabaha de Korobo, Italanda Stakaramashan, you are special. You don't bow to no other God but to Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Lose yourself. You need one more time to be broken. We forgot how to cry. We forgot how to cry. Jesus was a great example of this. He lived in, in the peace of his Father's will. On the night before he died, Judah betrayed him. Peter denied him. The rest of the disciples went to sleep when he asked them to stay awake. In the end, all the, his disciples fled, and he was, he faced the cross alone, and you're going to face that. You might be standing alone, but no, God is with you. God loves you, and he turned everything in your favor. Let me finish with this. I'm going to blow your mind. When I said, find me a pastor, don't undermine the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Why? Because New York City was lost. New York City was completely burning with so much violence. The gangs controlled the city. The mayor of the city, the governor of the New York State, they, were, they didn't know what to do.
You know what they did? They opened clubs. So what, when they opened this club, we used to go over there because they want us out of the street. But we used the club for plan our bottles. They psychiatrists, psychologists, I mean they give everything, they didn't know what to do. New York City was burning. And there was an article that came in Life Magazine about the gangs. And the guy that was killed was Michael Farmer. That we used, our gang used to fight them. It took that for the wake of call. He was in a, a sleep. Street wise? No. New York City needs a pastor. We were crying out for a pastor, and I was a sinner with no scruple. I didn't pray for a pastor. But maybe that was that old lady there. Maybe that was that young person that was praying, God, do something to this city. And God answered prayer. And what happened? He sent David Wilkerson, a country preacher. Uh, uh, a country preacher. It's skinny. I'm sorry, Gary, but that's the truth. Your father was skinny. <laughs> Shit, like a spaghetti. <laughs> that! 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 Huh? Take glasses? You try to psychoanalyze him? You couldn't. Besides, was going different direction, up and down and beside all of them. That! Men came into New York. And I was completely in hell. Don't you ever undermine the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit directs these men to a specific neighborhood. And regardless whether we may follow him, and regardless whatever we told him, and regardless if I spirit him, this man came already prepared with a message. He was willing, he didn't know that he's gonna get killed, but he was protected. How many thousands of angels? And you don't see it, but they're there. You think that God's gonna leave you alone? And that man to tell me, Nikki Cruz, Jesus loved you? Nikki Cruz, you can go ahead and you can kill me thus thousand pieces, but remember you can throw them on the street and every little piece is going to cry now that Jesus loves you. Yes. Send me, send me a pastor, please. Yes. Send me. I'm hurting. I'm burning. I'm in hell. My mind is gone. I'm in a curse. I cannot sleep. Drug is not enough. Violence is not enough. Girls are it's not enough. I am burning. I am losing it. I don't know what to do. Hey, hold it. I'm going to send a prophet. 
I'm going to send a pastor. Don't worry. He's in his way. And he's going to penetrate the city of New York. And he's going to get in into the heart of the matter. And he's going to go and tell that Nicky Cruz that Jesus loved him. And you know what has happened? It worked. I thank God for David Walker's son. He's right now in heaven waiting for me. Just wait a little longer, Dave. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have a party, a spiritual party tonight. We're going to go crazy for Jesus tonight. We're going to lose. Foot loose. <laughs> I feel the presence of Jesus. Just a moment, Kelly. I have to finish with this. I have to come over here because I've been looking at over here at these guys over here. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? You're doing all right? Amen. Let me just say, with all my heart, with gratitude, Wilkerson didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know where he was putting the finger. He was putting the finger in a curse. And tonight we're going to put the finger into that curse. Tonight. David Wilkerson never knew that I came for a background, totally possessed by the devil. My father, my mother, I saw them do miracles, not in the name of Jesus Christ. I saw my father heal people, not in the name of Jesus Christ. We were scared to death. Yeah, send me a pastor. Send me David Wilkerson. And there are a lot of workers on here. Yes. And Tim, you are a tremendous good speaker, good preacher. And Gary, Gary, you have hit the, you hit a heart over the park. And we're going to pray for you. Yeah, I'm going to call you here. And we're going to lay hands on you. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God answered prayer. That boy. That loser came to Jesus. That one went back to my parents' house. And the house was demon possessed. You can feel, you can smell the blood of animals of all the sacrifice that they did. The sound of my mother's voice always was there, laughing. I, 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 I honestly believe that my mother was possessed and she was a strong in witchcraft. But I believe that the devil blind is good in blinding the people. I do believe that my mother loved me. Although she has a split personality. And the Lord answered prayer. Amen. Wilkerson never knew. Forget about Nikki Cruz. I'm a miracle. Yes, it's, I'm a miracle. Oh, Jesus went straight to the rat hole of hell and he pulled me out of there. And now I'm going back to Puerto Rico to bring my mother to Jesus Christ and to curse that curse that was completely bound my family and to watch my brother 
given their heart to Jesus Christ and to see three of my brother being the minister of Jesus Christ. Thirteen of my brother gave their lives to Jesus Christ. What else God can do for us that he had not done?